and welcome back. Today I'll be showing you the insides of my Wurlitzer 210. If you're looking for a repair guide, I already have videos up on the 140A and the 200A. The actual repair segment of this video will be kind of short because of that. It's just over a year ago today that I picked this up from a woman on Facebook Marketplace about two hours north of where I live. I was definitely a little caught off guard when in the photos there was no grill baffle to be seen like on any other console Wurlitzer. And it was even more weird to find that it still wasn't there when I went to go pick it up. To get the repair segment out of the way, I started the regulation with the usual key leveling, dip, squaring, lost motion, but it's when I got to the let off is when things started going awry. What was happening is the jack butt wasn't hitting the let off button in time and it was dropping too early, which is a sign of a weak jack spring. To comfortably get to that spring, I had to remove the top of the action to get to the whip and flanges, take off the weapons, and then access the spring to either tighten it or replace it. This time around, I opted for tightening because they weren't too weak and after they felt really great. From there, I went on to tuning, which took a little longer since I had to make the top octave or so of reeds by hand since I used them in my previous 200A restoration. Now I did initially replace all the capacitors in the original amp, but after doing that, I must have messed up, tripped something or maybe shorted something, and it was not sounding good at all. It sounded like something in the reed bar was shorting, but even disconnecting the reed bar and the preamp entirely still caused the issue to persist. Running out of time, going away for a month, I decided to replace the whole amp entirely with a new retrolinear amp. And I just love those amps so much because they're dead silent and they're so easy to swap in. And I'm really glad I did because it's always nice to have a really quiet new amp. Now to get down to the specifics of what exactly is going on with this model. Starting at the easiest point, the manufacturer nameplate on the bottom lists it as a 210, and it does have most of the characteristics of your typical 210. Having only a headphone jack, having the side desk cutout you'd see in a 206A, and having 214 written on the amp rail in Sharpie. These were dated to be made between 1975 and 1976, and it's estimated that only a few hundred were produced. Now that all the normal stuff is out of the way, this is where things get pretty strange. Almost the whole lower cabinet of this keyboard is different from what a normal 210 or really even what a normal console Wurlitzer should look like. This model has a really well done textured black paint, which was used to mimic the typical black Tolex you'd see on other console Wurlitzers at the time. Possibly more strange is the complete lack of front grill cloth that you'd see on every other console Wurlitzer. This front cloth was used to cover the speaker cones, which faced out towards the player. You can find this grill cloth in the back of this model where the two eight inch speakers lie. That being said, those are the only two speakers on this model. There are no front facing speakers and there are no front facing speakers on the top portion of the keyboard. A normal 210 would have two speakers in the front and two speakers in the rear. This one only has the two in the rear. Since there are no front speakers on this model, the front knee board is at all plastic with that black textured paint on it. Now you might be thinking, what if they just lost the front two speakers? What if the girl cloth was ruined and they just swapped it out? It's a very good point and a very plausible one, but the two back speakers have the correct ohm ratings equaling to the amp. If there were four speakers in the series and they lost two, those two remaining speakers would not equal they, what they should have. But these two speakers equal what those four would have been in total. Now we could say they replaced the two back speakers as well, but the dates on the speakers match up to the production time, so they would have had to do that pretty quickly after they got the keyboard. With all that, my friend Steve Espinola from DocWorldly.com considers this a late variant 210. Considering it's two eight inch ohm speakers, and the vertical and horizontal braces that are not found in other console versions. While we'll never know for sure if this is a factory one-off or an aftermarket modification, there's reason to believe that this was something that was done in the factory. If you'd like to read a little more about this model and others, I'll leave his website below. If you want to find mine, 
It's number 32.1 in the list. With freshly whitened keys, tuned up insides, and a new quiet amp, this quirky guy sounds phenomenal. And compare it to other legged Wurlitzer models, there really is no going back when you hear the low end power of the console speakers. And finally, here are some of the demo videos I recorded through the headphone jack and with no EQ or noise suppression afterwards. I hope you enjoyed, and if you wanna see more videos like this, they're probably on my channel.